Hey, Michael Dermer here from The Lonely Entrepreneur, and thanks again for joining us on our podcast. You know, we often talk about what does it take to go through like the development process as an entrepreneur? Like, what are the foundational things that you need to be able to do as an entrepreneur? And, and I wanted to ask the question a little bit differently than just that. Instead of it saying, what's the process that I have to go through? I wanted to think about what are the, the foundational elements that you have to think about for your business? And if you understand that, I think you have a better understanding of the process that you need to go through to try to understand how to bring together the skills and resources to do that. So I always think of the foundational elements of a business as being three key areas. One is your financial plan. A lot of times people go into entrepreneurial ventures and they go in with passion and energy and belief, and they don't actually boil it down into a, a financial plan. Now, a financial plan isn't just, hey, let's throw some numbers up on the board. First and foremost, it ties in your personal goals, right? Your personal goals for the business. Do I want to turn it into a business that employs three people? Do I want to sell it for $100 million? Do I want to help a million people? Whatever it is that your personal goals are, that will dictate what your financial plan is, right? If I want to open one barbershop, that's one plan. If I want to open supercuts, that's another plan. Okay, so the first thing you have to do as part of this first big area, which is your financial plan, is you have to determine what your financial goal, your personal goals are. Once you have those personal goals, then you start to set your company goals. Like, what do we want to try to do? And that's what translates into your financial plan. And what I mean by your financial plan is at least three years of your projections of income and expenses. And of course, most importantly, your first year where you're really laying out in a high level of detail, not that you aren't for years two and three, but really your income and your expenses and what they would call your income statement or profit and loss statement, right? So that financial plan that boils down to, okay, a month from now, we're going to spend this money. Two months from now, we're going to make this revenue and spend this money. That dictates how you allocate and align your scarce resources, right? And I know what people say, well, wait a minute, I haven't done it yet. How do I know what it's going to be? Well, there are projections, right? You're trying to bring the talent to the table to say, you know, if I take certain actions, here's the financial plan that I'm trying to achieve or put differently. Once I set in my mind what I need to get to, that then drives me to that financial plan. Okay, so first thing of this entrepreneurial development process is what is my financial plan? Okay, two is what I call your go to market strategy. And so your go to market strategy is how are we going to go to the market with our product or service in a way that's going to stand out and win? Okay, and this has got a whole bunch of elements to it, but at its core, how do I stand out? Or as we like to say at Lonely Entrepreneur, how do I find a playground where nobody else is playing. You know, we believe intimately that the world is such a cluttered place that you have to find a spot for yourself where everybody else is selling apples and you're selling oranges, right? Or your playground where nobody else is playing. And once you feel like you have that playground, then that dictates a lot of the go-to-market strategies and approaches that you will ultimately put in place. Those strategies might be who you target with what messaging. It might be that you, know, you take a product and sell it to a certain part of the market, right? It's not so good. You sell it to another part of the market and it's new and innovative, right? So I'll give you one example. There was a woman that we were working with who was a nurse for a good part of her career and she just got tired of the profession. She wanted to do something different and she actually was quite passionate about helping people with financial planning and financial literacy. So she left nursing and she started this practice to do it. And what she found was, like a lot of us do, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of financial planners and there's free financial literacy tools. She's like, how do I stand out? How do I have a go-to-market strategy where I'm actually gonna, where I'm gonna win, right? Well, after talking to her a little bit, it turns out that we were asking her to tell us a little bit about her clients and the ones that she had won. And it turns out that she'd been doing a lot of work for nurses and doctors in her small client base. And we're like, that's your playground. You're going to become the financial planner for people from the medical profession because you were in the medical profession, right? You can talk to their specific issues and challenges. And now all of a sudden, she went from being one of thousands to one of one. Maybe not one, but 
I think you get my point, right? So this go-to-market strategy and the playground where nobody else is playing, it's incredibly important that if you're going to achieve that first part, which is your financial plan, you need a go-to-market strategy that's going to stand out. Now, people are saying, okay, well, what about my website and social media? Yes, but that has to reflect a go-to-market strategy that's going to win. Or put differently, what you put into those vehicles has to be a go-to-market strategy that's differentiated. Remember, everybody uses websites. Everybody uses social media. As we like to say, if you were dropped here from another planet and you started a financial counseling business, you'd have on your website what everybody else would have on your website. Okay? That doesn't win. So it's the things you put into the tactical things like social media and websites and email marketing and the like that wins. And so that's why the second big bucket of your, your go-to-market strategy is so critical. Okay, so we have our financial plan, right? That says where we're trying to go. We have our go-to-market approach, right? Which says, okay, I've got to get my differentiated strategy and then, then, then dictate that down into my tactical things. And then the third bucket is what I would call your operating priorities. With this financial plan that you have as your goal, with this operating, I'm sorry, with this go-to-market strategy that's going to differentiate you, what are the things, what are the key operations things do I need to do? Do I need to raise money, right, to bring that plan to life? Do I need to hire a team? Do I need to bootstrap it and get my website up? Do I have to develop great sales and marketing materials? Do I need an advisory board? You know, whatever the major priorities are. But the reason why those things become priorities is because you've set your financial plan aligned to your personal goals because you've created a go-to-market strategy that you believe is going to win. And then you go, great, I got those. Now let me chip away at the operating priorities that I'm going to make sure that I'm making progress on, bringing my best talent to, bringing other resources to, to the extent that I have them to give us a best chance of success. And I think in developing as an entrepreneur, we go out with passion, we go out with energy, we go out with great ideas. And sometimes we don't say, well, wait a minute, forget about me for a second. If the business has these elements, it can be successful. If it doesn't have these elements, it's not going to be successful. Great. This is what the business needs. Okay, now how do I figure out what my skill set is, what my skill set isn't, and what else I need to bring to the table to be like, well, I don't know how to write a financial plan. Well, I got to solve that. Well, I don't know how to create a differentiating market strategy. Well, many of you do because you're innovators and you think differently like most entrepreneurs do. I don't know how to set up the priorities to do that. But the point is you have to say to yourself, okay, if I have these three big buckets of things, it significantly increases the likelihood that I'm going to take this vision and passion and energy and not just work hard. We're all willing to work hard but to be able to translate it into something that will increase our chances of turning our passion to success, okay? Financial plan, differentiated go-to-market strategy, operating priorities aligned to those two. And if I think if you think about those three buckets, even if you don't know them like the back of your hand, as your guidepost for the development you have to do as an entrepreneur, I think that can really align you to giving you the best chance of success. And don't always think it has to be you. Doesn't mean you have to go learn financials. Doesn't mean you have to go learn market strategy. You can bring others to the table. They could be people you're not paying, advisors and others that are willing to help, okay? But what you have to understand that without a good financial plan and without good go market strategy and without the priorities that line up to those things, you significantly undermine the chance of you being successful and doing what we all wanna do as lonely entrepreneurs, which is turn our passion into success. Again, we always thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to hear hopefully some of our insights that you can employ in your business to improve your chances of turning your passion into success. So as always, thank you for your time.